This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 16 revises net present value and internal rate of returns. I'm not going to go through the example which is in the notes, that's for you to, to practice. I will, however, remind you the main areas to just be careful about. First of all, remember that when you are working out net present value, this is based on cash flows. So depreciation is not relevant, that is not a cash flow. Similarly, if there are reallocated existing fixed costs, that is not an incremental or an additional cash flow, that would be irrelevant. And similarly, some costs are past costs, costs that have been already spent, they've gone, they can't be in any way controlled, they're irrelevant to the calculation. But opportunity costs, future revenue forgone because of a particular decision, are going to be relevant. A positive net present value says that a project is worthwhile, a negative says it's not worthwhile. And the alternative to, to net present value is internal rate of return. And if you remember, to work out internal rate of return, you have to work out at two different discount rates, you have to work out the net present value. So here is the approximation to the internal rate of return. Remember, internal rate of return is, is normally um, interpolated, it's going to be a bit of an approximation. L is the lower discount rate you, you try. So this is the, the discount rate lower, let's say maybe 10%. Uh, and NPV is the net present value at that lower rate. NPVL is the uh, lower rate and net present value. That's going to be appearing there again. And then you have to choose another uh, discount rate, maybe 15%. And NPVH is going to be the net present value at a higher rate. And then we have H minus L over there. Ideally, uh, you're going to end up with something at maybe 10%. The NPV is maybe 1,000. And maybe at 15%, the NPV is maybe minus 800. Ideally, it's going to be one positive and one negative. So the internal rate of return from these here uh, would be the lower discount rate, 10, plus NPV at that lower rate over NPV at the lower rate. And here's the only place people ever really go wrong. It's minus the negative NPV at 800, and over here, 15 minus 10. So it's going to be 10 plus 1,000 over 1800 times 5. Doesn't matter at all what that is really for the sake of this. So 10 divided by 18 times 5, 2.77. We have about 12.8 approximately. If you choose different starting discount rates, you'll end up with very slightly different net present values. The internal rate of return is higher than a discount rate. It means you're earning money faster than you have to pay interest. If the internal rate of return is below the discount rate, it means the, uh, the project isn't earning enough to stay in there with the interest and to account for it. One of the problems with internal rate of return uh, is that, uh, strictly speaking, there's an internal rate of return every time the change, the, the, the direction uh, of the cash flow changes. So a normal project, it's negative and negative cash flow at the start, time naught you invest, and then maybe times one, two, and three, you get cash coming in. So the direction of the cash flow has changed once, negative to positive. If, however, at the end of the project, you had a lot of money to spend on putting the land back to the way it was, at fixing the premises, it would go negative, positive for some late years, and then maybe in time four, be negative again, and there you would have two internal rates of return, multiple yields as they're called. The technique used in P5 to deal with this is to use what's called the modified internal rate of return. Now there are formulas around this. If you're doing P4, you may have come across a formula. 
uh, but I think there's an easier way to, to do it. What you have to do is you separate your inflows and your outflows into two, two, two lots, really. And all of your inflows, what you do is you say, well, as soon as that inflow occurs, I can invest that for a number of years. And you invest it until the end of the project. And you invest it at the interest rate or discount rate. So it's gradually, you put it away and it's gradually growing up. All the cash outflows are discounted back to zero, to time zero. So you end up with two cash flows, a negative, all the negative cash outflows brought back to time zero, all the positive cash inflows projected forward to the terminal time of the project. And with these two cash flows only, then you can work out the modified internal rate of return. So, let's see a very simple example of this. This is not the example which is in your notes. Uh, I'm leaving that there for you to try yourself. The answer is in the back of the, the, the notes. So here we have the cash flows. Here's a time, 0 to 4. And here we have negative, positive, negative, positive, positive, a very eccentric sort of a cash flow. And the cost of capital is, is 10%. So the first thing we do is you go to the two positive or three positive cash flows. And what you want to do is to say what would they amount to if at time one, for example, I invested that for a number of years and bring it out at time four. So I can invest from one to three. I can invest that for three years, put it on deposit for three years, and release it at time four. The time three inflow, I can only invest for one year till time four. So we take our 2000, and what we're doing is we're uh, compounding it up, adding on compound interest, really. So to year two, to year three, to year four, three lots of compound interest will allow this to grow to 2662. The year three inflow can only be invested for one year before it gets to that. So that'll be only times 1.1, that'll come to 3850. And then the final inflow is already at time four. It's not going to be invested at all. It is already at its terminal value. So the sum of these three inflows projected forward, basically to time four, is 10312. The outflows we bring back, we discount those back to time zero. The 5,000 at time zero is already at time zero. So we just need to bring this one back by two years. Discount this by two years at 10%. And the uh, factor there, it'll be 1,000 divided by 1.1 divided by 1.1 discounted to two years at 10%. This comes to 5826. So this is your negative flow. This is your positive flow. So what we're saying is we can reduce or simplify this rather complex set of flows to one the negative flow going out now and one positive flow appearing at time four. And that the internal rate of return of these two flows, uh, the, when the, the, it's a discount rate, which gives us zero NPV. Okay. So what we're saying is uh, we have 5826 invested now. That's our cash outflow now and what we say is we're getting one cash inflow at time four and there's going to be we have to discount that okay so the discounted inflow is the same as the outflow that's zero NPV that's what you look for internal rate of return so at the internal rate of return the cash outflow at time zero is equal to the discounted cash inflow at time four so here we have 5826 equals the discounted inflow at time four. We need to find, what we're trying to find is this four year discount factor, which makes those equal because the discount rate that's in that discount factor is going to be the internal rate of return. So if we divide this through, so we're going to divide 5826 by 10312, that's going to be that. So basically we're saying five, eight, two, six.
divided by 10, 3, 1, 2 equals 0 0.56 0.5649 and that will be the four year discount factor we need and that is the four year discount factor at a rate R which here is going to be the internal rate of return rate so what we need to do is to kind of turn that upside down uh, so we turn 1 over 1 plus R to the fourth upside down it becomes that and if you take 1 over 0 0.5649, it's 1.77. So here we have 1 plus r to the fourth is 1.77. We take the quarter root of uh, both sides, the, the fourth root. Uh, so that will simply come to 1 plus r. And uh, we need 1 plus 77 to the quarter or to the you know, take a square root then take a square root is what you're going to be getting to and we're left with 1 plus r equals 1.15 therefore r equals 0.15 or the 15 percent so that is the, the way to look at or do modified internal rate of return have a look at the example in the notes make sure you just see how to do it and finally, here are the questions which are suitable for you to try relating to chapter 16.